We're going to take a look at the economic impact of the situation in Liria, uh, Libya. We're joined by Hafed Gawel, um, a Libyan analyst based here in Washington, D.C. Good to see you again. Thank you. This situation in Libya, I mean, Owen was talking about uh, in the last story that it has only been just three years exactly. since the last big change, and now we're at the civil war situation again. Let me first start by asking you, how serious is it right now? It's very, very serious. I think that you, you're looking at a country that is imploding, um, it, and it is it has a major impact, even though Libya is a small country, but it has a major impact on the Mediterranean, on North Africa, and on the African continent, Sahel, especially uh, because of the links. So I think the, the global impact would be enormous. And you also have the oil dimension, of course, which is always present. It is, I mean, I'm suspecting it is, but is that part of the reason of fighting? What are the other reasons that we're seeing such a, such a diverse factional fighting there? What, what happened is that when the state collapsed in 2011, um, a number of these militias, uh, you know, became armed and they took over all of the weapons that were present before. Uh, they became numerous all over the, the country. Some of them are criminal gangs uh, with arms uh, that specialize in arms trafficking, uh, illegal migrants and so on. Others have ideological side to them, Islamists and, and others, or Islamists of all shades. And then you have also some tribal um, armed groups. When you have a big pie, uh, the, which is the massive oil and gas deposits under the feet, and no state and no uh, monopoly on power or uh, uh, violence, um, thieves tend to fight among each other. So and that's what's happening. We, we have an evacuation of um, staff from the U.S. and among yes. other embassies from around the world as well. Not, not all of them, but some of them. And there's some real concern that there's going to be an impact at least to the oil supply chain. Walk us through a little bit um, why Libya is important in the global oil picture and what might happen next. Uh, Libya is, uh, is one of the original members of OPEC and one of the, of, the, of the strong members. It is ranked around number six or seven in the world in terms of deposits. Um, but more importantly, Libya has a very specialized crude. Um, it's, it's a high... Uh, great crude is very light crude. There are a number of refineries in Europe that rely on Libyan supply. Uh, Italy relies on Libya for about 25% of its energy supplies. Uh, France and Germany are also uh, heavy buyers. Um, Libya is also right across the Mediterranean, uh, so it traditionally uh, did not have to go through shipping lanes of the Suez Canal and uh, Persian Gulf, where you had all kinds of political instabilities in the past. So there has been a reliance, especially from Europe, on both oil and gas coming from Libya. It, before the civil war started in 2011, Libya was producing 1.6 million barrels a day. Over the last year, uh, because of this uh, uh, militias, the supply has collapsed at one point to below 100,000 a day. Today, it's about 300 to 400,000 barrels a day. The, the, the impact of the global markets, I mean, we've seen oil prices uh, move around quite a bit yes. this year. I mean, obviously, not all of that's related to yes. Libya. There are other hot spots around the world. Right. Do you think longer term that things will settle down? You mentioned that uh, production has come back online, some of it anyways. But it's Where are we for different. the rest of the year? How does it look? That's the, that's the big question. Um, I don't believe it's going to look any better. I think there are, in addition to um, the fighting and the political instability, you have also a lot of technical problems that delay return back to that 1.6 million barrels a day. You also have, because this collapse happened over many months, there has been substitution um, a factor here. A lot of the refineries in Europe have substituted the supply chain. Yeah, they're, they're going elsewhere for their oil, Precisely. essentially. Precisely. Um, you, you think about the number of multinational companies that have gone into Libya after the, the, the collapse to try to rebuild the country, and there was some traction, at least in the first year or two, but that's all seems to be, have fallen apart now. How, how are you going to get that trust back for multinational firms to say, hey, come back and help us help us rebuild when, when this is what we're seeing on TV, these pictures? Very, very, very good question. Um, it's all going to depend, obviously, on any kind of political leadership that takes place.
place. There are ways in which you can restore that trust. Uh, we've seen it in other parts of the world that collapsed in the past. However, it will need some very smart economists and public policy uh, professionals who can engage uh, the international community that way. Prior to all of that, stability, political stability needs to come back and security needs to come back. Libya has a pretty good solid reserves uh, uh, in its coffers. I mean, the reserves are about 100, between 100 and 130 billion dollars in the central bank. Oh, that's, that's, that's a trem tremendous amount. However, the fiscal situation today, because of the supply disruption over the last year, today the Libyan government is relying in almost entirely on that reserves. Um, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge problem. Um, Hafed al uh, thank you very much for thank joining, you, joining us. Enjoy. When they get things settled down over there, perhaps you can go there and, uh, and help them <laughs> well. They, they, it sounds thank like you. they're going to need you. Thank you.